There are obviously many approaches to voice work, but there is no one ready-made infallible technique that you can apply directly. Each generation has to make his own way through Shakespeare's language. Each generation must catch his own modern idiom and make Shakespeare's language ring true for the audience of its day. If there's one absolute invoice work, it may be this. It's about the present. How do we find a voice for today while still honoring the demands of a classical text? Actors must be so skilled in so many different types of performance, from television to open-air theater, and their voices are often challenged in ways unimaginable a hundred years ago. One thing I've learned at the Royal Shakespeare Company is that voice exercises have to accommodate actors trained in different techniques who use a range of different terminology. What is important to understand are the principles behind what you do. Repetition isn't about learning lines. It's about inviting these principles into your life. The work isn't about learning the one correct way of speaking. The work is designed only to make you feel freer and to give you a greater ease as you vocalize and speak. The danger is that your voice work will in itself become a method. So don't reduce this work to a series of exercises that you do in isolation from your acting, or you risk losing the connection with your goal, whether that's acting or speaking. Only when you discover that voice work makes it easier for you as a human being, on or off stage, will you actually want to use it. Okay, just join in with me. One finger. One, One finger. finger. Yeah, it's a voice session. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Good. One finger. One, One finger. finger. One thumb. One thumb. One wrist. One wrist. One elbow. One elbow. One flick of the head. One flick of the head. Keep everything moving. Keep everything this moving. preparation video has three aims. First, to lay the principles behind the physical use of our voice then to set the means by which we can realize the demands of a given text, and finally, to explore our vocal potential and establish an ease with our sound. In order to get started, we must realize that first and foremost, that it is freedom of movement which leads to freedom of the voice. One elbow, one flick of the head, keep everything moving. Last time, and one finger, one thumb, one wrist, one elbow, one flick of the head, Keep everything moving. Great. <laughs> okay, good. Feel better? Right. Can you just divide into pairs and let's just focus in a slightly different way? So it doesn't matter who, who you work with. Okay, can I just kick us off? If I just work, start off with. Just one of you um, stand by the side of the other. Okay, all I would like us to do is just the person behind is just very, very easily and gently just to, with, with two fingers or one finger, just to tap down your partner's spine. And then where we're tapping, I'd like the person just to begin to release their vertebral column. Do you get the idea? So just where I'm tapping, just begin to let those vertebrae release, Jim. Let the head drop forward. Right, okay. I'm going to try that again. <laughs> Come back up, yeah? See if you can really tune into the ones just right at the top here. Yeah? When you first focus inside yourself and become more aware of what's begin. going on there, it's just bound to feel a little head. odd. Just but when you go beyond forward. this initial feeling, you soon begin to be more conscious of your body and you start coming to terms with the physicality of your voice. Down the spine. And if you feel that your partner has, has jumped a section, yeah, just go back up on that and gently tap it to see whether that, that helps them to, to locate that area. I, I said gently, but uh, you might, uh, I mean, let, let your partner tell you if it's actually, they can feel the sensation enough. The spine it's vital for our breathing. Really Notice the how the ribs connect at the back, 
how they move. This can then help you to check that you are not overarching or breathing in the upper chest. And then you're partnering your own time, just slowly working in bring pairs, yourselves up. Just you'll discover a lot about yourself. The movement in the back. You may notice, for instance, that concentrating on such a specific activity actually causes you to hold your breath. Good. And just take that into a yawn and a stretch, everyone. Good. Okay, let's just move on to being a bit more specific about tensions that really may affect our vocal functioning. And it'd be quite good if you just grabbed a chair or a box and you need one per pair. And one of you sit down. Okay, whoever's most tired. Good, so the person sitting down, you're off duty. Don't do anything for the moment, okay? We're gonna do all the work, people standing up. Just come to the side of them, take your partner's arm and just lift it up. Okay, right, now the question is, did they allow us to lift their arm or did they help us? And that's the danger point, isn't it? We're so used to being in charge all the time that it's very hard to let go of that. See whether you can actually completely let go. Put the arm back down again. Okay. Now, see if you cannot resist at all. Take their arm, lift it up. Does that seem different? Heavier. Heavier. Right, great. So, I suppose we can begin to equate relaxation with, with, with tuning into our body weight then, can't we? Because it, it's not a useful thing to say, relax! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, it's actually something that we have to to locate inside as a sensation, isn't it? Which is not easy, but 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 at the moment it's quite in a quite a an easy superficial way, just the arm, but just to notice that actually it's about that weight. Okay. Just give the wrist a little shake to check it's free. Elbow. Okay, you might find that the shoulder is still gripping a little bit, I don't know, yeah? Sometimes if you just think of letting the elbow drop, then the shoulder can go. Great. Place that arm down and go around to the other side and see how the other arm seems. <laughs> The shoulder feels a foot lower than the other Oh, one. does it? Right. <laughs> we'll get them equal, yeah? Okay. Take their arm. Okay, to really check that they are letting go, just the person sitting in the chair, will you, will you consciously tense your arm, resist, that's it. So, you, yeah? And then undo that, let it go. And really let it go. <laughs> Okay, give the wrist a shake. All right, just, just one other thing. The person sitting down, the, just some, some incident, some, some moment that, that, that you can recall from this last week that's really annoyed you, that's really irritated you, that you don't mind sharing with your partner. Go. I've had a lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just stop a second. It, it, it's pretty cheap to ask you to do that. But did their arm change at all when they, yeah. And, and that's the really crucial thing, isn't it? That, that we can do all this work when we aren't speaking. We can get relatively relaxed quite easily in this way. But it's actually when we come back to language that it's much harder. And it's how do we keep that sense of ease with words is really the crucial thing, isn't it? Sometimes if I'm trying to stretch out and warm up before, you know, a show, and I'm not completely and totally, you know, uh, loose and, you know, ready to go, I feel like something's wrong, and I feel like I, I need to find out what that is and take care of it. Right. And it preoccupies me. You know? Yeah. But if you just think, you know, well, that's naturally just the way it is, and, and work with it, you know. I think you've got just, to, because yeah. Yeah. you can't be relaxed all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Let's come and stand behind your partner, uh, let him have his arm back, and... 
just let's do a little bit of work um, on the shoulders. Just pop our fingers lightly on, on the back of their shoulders and with our thumbs, just stretch them down their spine. So we're just either side of their spine with our thumbs. Does that make sense? It's always where a muscle joins the skeleton that we get tense, isn't it? It's not actually in the middle of it usually. It's... Just with your thumbs, just either side of the spine, just press quite firmly and then on that spot, circle, as it were. Don't be afraid to press reasonably firmly. I'm sure your partner will tell you if it's too much, but it just allows the muscle to undo a little bit underneath, yeah? And then in your own time, just bring your thumbs up their back, still just either side of their spine. So, so you're pressing on the spot, really. Bring the thumb up. till you come right up to their shoulders and then rather like you're kneading dough to make bread or something, yeah? Just with those muscles on top of the shoulders, just, just move them around to feel them nice and loose. Okay, then what I'd like you to do is if we could just pull their muscles or their shoulders up and then the person sitting down, just let your shoulder bones, as it were, drop inside. So it's almost like we're we're sort of lifting the flesh off, off the skeleton. Sounds disgusting, sorry, yeah? <laughs> and then just let it go. Okay, now just put our fingers lightly on their shoulders, and the person sitting down, just, just lift your shoulders a little, so you're pressing the shoulders against our fingers. And let them go. Okay, now just lift and drop them a few times so that's just a movement. It isn't really what happens when we're tense. We could still do that movement and be tense inside the muscles, couldn't we? So let them just drop. Now, just again, press, just lift the shoulders against the fingers, just a little, so it's all... Yeah. And that's much more what happens, isn't it, when, when we're in a tense situation, when I open my bank statement. Yeah? Does that register? Now, more importantly, let those shoulders go so that you feel the difference. So you've got that sensation to draw on, yeah? And then just let them come up again. Not, not as much as that, Sean, just, ju yeah? Otherwise it won't connect with, with what happened. <coughs> okay, now, apart from just lifting your shoulders, how else has that affected you in, in your body? You're breathing, yeah. You might feel that perhaps you're holding your breath or you're breathing differently. And that's the, that's the, the area, isn't it, that shoulders actually affect our breathing. Can I put them down now? Yeah, you may. <laughs> <laughs> Does it feel better? Okay. When you just let them drop, just really check they've released as much as possible because often they'll go that little bit... Ah. Good. Now, just on to the next. Just allow your head to drop forward on your chest so you feel the muscles in the back of the neck stretching. So I suppose that you're aware of the weight of your head. And then if we could just with the thumb just massage down either side of the neck vertebrae so that we're just circling and don't be afraid to go right up under the hairline so that you find the point where those muscles actually connect to the skull. And then perhaps with one finger, just trace up the neck vertebrae until you find that little indentation at the top where the skull pivots. And if we could put or place our finger there, can you all find it? And then, if, if your partner would just very gently nod their head, we should feel the movement of where our finger is. Okay, and just let the head drop, and then pop our fingers on the back of their neck, and the person sitting down, just slowly lift your head up using those muscles in the back of the neck, so you're aware of those muscles working until your head is upright.
and then just do it wrong once so that you use the muscles at the front of the neck to bring it up. So if I just, if I do it, so I'm just bringing my head up this way. So I'm actually supporting the head with these muscles and that's going to obviously interfere with the voice in another way. But <laughs> feels quite good. But it also links, doesn't it, with, with that pressure for you as an actor to be to be in control all the time, to be interesting, and, and that's where we often push, isn't it? So it's just to be aware of that. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just quite quickly, just drop the head forward and then turn your face out first. So you bring the chin out and bring the head up that way and we won't feel the muscles in the back of the neck working in the same way. Pop a hand under their skull and just see if they'll allow us just to move it. And then the person sitting down, very, very small movement. The person sitting down, just resist. So you find that point of locking and then release it. And we keep moving the head and resist and release and rest for a moment. Acknowledging the effects of these tensions on our voice is good and useful, yet we must not become obsessed with our own stress. Control stress can sometimes be useful and is often part of what drives us on. The important thing is always to work on our positive, to build up our strength. And what really gives us our strength is our breath. What we'll do is just put our hands around our partner's ribs. And just whatever breath you've got in there at this moment in time, just sigh your breath right out. And now wait for that moment when you need to replace your breath and then just let your breath replace automatically. Deep breathing is and a relaxation in itself once more. and it is also the source of the actor's energy. The crucial point here is to become aware of our breathing and potential. Wait for that need we can then breathing. gain greater access to our breath and when we speak. It is obvious that we all breathe, Open the mouth but the relationship between words breath and out. breath becomes immediately more complicated when we act or speak. Empty. It may then be useful to practice the active use of and the outgoing breath, breath, both with our own sound and with a piece of text. And open the, mouth the specific objective in this out. sequence is to find freedom with the ribs, as well as to explore Empty. the deepest source of our breath. And wait for that knee to replace your breath and in through the nose to stimulate your ribs and sigh out. The difficulty for us sometimes okay, is to become aware of the difference between one's own habitual there, breathing pattern right and the breathing pattern H. of a character Shh. in a text. So this, in other words, must inspire. lead us to begin exploring the relationship the between breath and thought. And feel those ribs opening out. Open the mouth quite wide and sigh your breath out. empty and wait for that need and breathe in, let it settle and out through an S good and the last little bit blow it out through an SH to stimulate the incoming breath and relax for that incoming breath, let it happen, inspire, and an S again. Good, and rest. What we don't want to do is just mechanically practice this breathing, is it? It wants to link with, with our thoughts in the end. So just to, to um, provoke that incoming breath. You might find it useful, just the last little bit of breath you feel you've got in there, just to blow it out each time. Shh. Mm. And that, that often serves those lower ribs to open out. Yeah? Yeah. What is the point of 
diminishing marginal returns with the in, in taking of breath. I mean, you start getting tied up if you take in too much. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is, this is part of our practice, isn't it? I mean, you never feel that you, you need to take, you need to overfill. I think sometimes as actors, we a big breath and we overfill, and that's a tension in, in itself. I mean, what we've really got to keep practicing is how we handle this active, outgoing breath. That's what we have to speak on, isn't it? The active use of the outgoing breath. Well, it's the whole thing about breathing, isn't it? That we're doing it all day long right. without thinking about it. But, but, but when we actually come to a piece of text or to speaking, it's much harder actually to, to organize it. Mm. And like we did in the, the section before, when um, we actually lifted the shoulders and actually that affected our breathing, it's really to start working on that so that a full breath which involves the lower ribs does not involve being tense up here. Mm. So it's so you're really practicing about th that area. Also, breathing normally every day, sometimes you breathe You're shallow. speaking, so you just go, and then I said, and that, and you're just taking a tiny breath from from here, and you need more than that when you've got such a long yeah. thought. And so you, you open that up, yes. Much. And I've deliberately started with the ribs, which um, can feel a little alien to us today. Mm -hmm. But we mustn't deny that these ribs have got have got their 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 movement and their freedom. And the freer we get them, the more we can actually release our resonance. Yes. So just as we sit there, being if if it's comfortable to sit on on your sitting bones, that yeah, is all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, not everybody likes doing it, but. Like we did when we were just working on, on, on our arms, just to be aware of the difference between tension and relaxation, and therefore to tune into our weight. Just allow yourselves just to really sit down inside yourself, as it were, so you're slightly aware of your weight. So you may want to just gently rock back a little bit. Again, it's just that avoiding that feeling that you're always presenting as an actor. You're always on show. You're always having to take control in that, in that way. And then just as you carry on just doing that, just allow yourself the conscious permission just to be aware of your breath reaching down inside you. So just as you rock back, just let a breath in and down and then just release that breath through an F. <sighs> As you come slightly forward, if that feels useful. Yeah? And then just gently again, just rock back as your breath comes in, relaxing for the incoming breath. And then out. Just try it once more. This time, just to build on that, can you just rock back and just very gently sigh into your hand with the breath as you come forward? Yeah. So you're going to rock back, feel your weight, and then just sigh on a whispered R. Ah. So it's pure whisper. So there's nothing happening here. We'll, we'll pick that up a little bit later, but just so that it's your breath coming through you and rock back. Do you feel the warm air just on your fingertips? And just sigh the breath out. The reason why I put the blue ball there, you were all wondering, yeah, um, it, it is just on the outgoing breath. Just focus your F to the ball, OK? So, so in your own time, just rock back if that's useful, but let your breath in and then out with your F to the blue ball. Go. And in your own time, let that breath replace. And again, that channel of breath coming up through you and going on and out to the blue ball. Okay, great. What, what I'd like you to do is, next time, is with your breath, I want your F to move the blue ball, all right? Whoever moves it may keep it, all right, yeah? All right? So, so just let that breath, in your own time, just let that breath in, and out through an F.
<laughs> Could you feel a connection down here? So it's actually active, isn't it? The feeling of something happening down here and going on and out, all right? I think sometimes we worry so much about, about um, being a little bit tense when we're breathing or is it really happening? We get too preoccupied with what's happening inside us, don't we, perhaps? And it's really what our breath is doing to somebody else that in the end is what's important, yeah? So just rock back once more, and this time just perhaps be aware that you're not leading with the head, you're not, you're not gripping with the shoulders, it's your breath working through you, and in your own time, fill down, and just once more, I think it's just important to, to let our breath settle, just to connect. Otherwise, somehow, you're pushing the breath out or you're releasing the breath before it's just quite connected with you. And I don't mean sort of hold it consciously, but just that, that, that moment of, of just acknowledging it's your breath. But when the breath comes in, it, it's just there before we actually let it out. Because it's often those moments, isn't it, where, where the danger is that we actually close our larynx. So that when we begin to release our breath, Actually, so we're back on, on the throat, as it were. So those points of just as the breath comes in, we're not careful, we just, we just hold it there. Or just as we're about to, to, to actually let an, another breath in. Does that make any sense? No. But in the end, it's, it's fairly obvious that there are many ways of working on our breathing potential. But ultimately, we must never lose sight of why we are doing these exercises this type of work has no value in itself unless we realize that breath finds its true purpose and completion in thought. But before we discover that these two are one, we must look at how breath and sound merge to produce resonance. Now that our body is freer and that we have started to connect with our breath, we must be ready to spend time feeling the vibration of our own resonance, acknowledging that it is practically part of us, recognizing that a change in our vocal quality must be one useful step on the road to accepting and using that newfound quality. Just set a hum up. Okay, and just pop a hand on a head, just where you can just be aware of that resonance, perhaps on your forehead. When speaking, we are often conscious of trying to establish a link with the space around us. But the relevant means of achieving this sometimes escapes us. It is not so much volume as resonance which we need. Are your lips buzzing? Yeah. yeah. Just, just loose them a bit, blow through them. Move them around a bit. That helps. Okay, and just set another hum up. Mm. The major difficulty in working on one's resonance is in being able to use the fuller, richer, more relaxed tone that is hopefully found by practice and finding the way to be comfortable with this sound when one acts, rehearses or in everyday life. Because often, the sound which is relevant and truthful for us in today's world is quite different. I mean, the voice that we find on a small amount of breath drawn from the upper part of the chest and the resultant vocal quality is not appropriate for a theatre space, nor will it serve a text that is actively rich with sound. And then hum down that one nostril. Right, can you feel it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right, fine. Yeah. I, don't know if I, yeah. really I think we need. I think we need tissues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've lost the moment. Yeah. Right. Should we wait for you? No, I'm yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. And and up. Good. <laughs> and up the other nostril. So you just feel the space there that, that's there for resonance as you hum down the other one. Mm. I think 
often that, that we're getting a little bit of vibration there, but we're not really humming. It's not really there anymore. So often one is slightly blocked there. Mm. Yeah, today. Yeah, just just, just to, I mean, this helps. But sometimes, just is it like you're in a I don't know a wind tunnel and you're mm. everything's being pulled right open. So just let a breath up, yeah, <laughs> and then see if that changes your hum. Mm. Set another hum up. Mm. Have a gentle pat on the chest. Pat, pat your partner. Feel the resonance. Okay, just move it up in pitch a little bit. Bounce a bit. and establish our own resonance, we must first understand the difference between a sung resonance and a spoken resonance. That is to say between the way singers are able to relate to their quality of sound and the way actors are able to relate to it. Having found a bit more freedom, hopefully, in those lower ribs, I just want to now give us an opportunity to start turning that breath from those ribs in, into sound. I think that the freer we get these ribs, the, the, the more likely it is for our throats to relax. So that's what I, I'm really getting to, okay? So can we just um, put our hands firmly on our partner's ribs at the side and thumbs around the back? Okay. And just whatever breath you've got in there at this moment in time, just blow it out. And then that last little bit, just expel through an SH. So you're inviting inspiration to happen. And then let your breath replace in your own time. Shoulders free, neck free, yes. And sigh that breath out through an F. And the last little bit, just blow it out through an SH, if that's useful. And then breathe all the way around, upper chest free. And now hum. Hum, two, three, four for ten, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what breath you've got left, blow it out. Shh. So we're stimulating that incoming breath. Let it settle a moment, hum again. Just Tarzan your chest, pat your chest. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go, let that breath replace and change round. Right, what I'd like to do now is, um, it's always tricky for me to explain this, but the person in front is rather like a car, a vehicle. You're going to go on a journey, wherever you want to, around, around the space, all right, for ten counts. And you come back to your partner, who is the fixed point, um, and rather like a petrol pump, a gas pump, yeah? You come back for some unleaded breath, right? And then off you go again with a different instruction. Got the idea? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll give you a different one each time. Okay, so let's activate the, 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 that incoming breath. Just blow it out. Shh. And neck free, shoulders free. Wait for that knee to replace your breath and widen all the way round and just sing out gently who for ten as you walk around the room. Go. Who. Two, three, four, five, six. Wave to someone. Seven, eight. Back to your partners. Nine, ten. Get those ribs opening out. Replace that breath. And with your breath, your ho vowel for ten. Go. Ho. Two. Three, and run with it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and replace your breath. Widen and ha and jump three times at least as you run around. Go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
seven, eight, nine, ten, and empty. And replace. And hey, sit down on something twice. Go. Hey, hey. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back to your partners. Nine, ten, and let that breath in. <laughs> And rest. How's that feel? Moving feels great. Yeah, it's a combination, isn't yeah. it? We've got to do that detailed work to really tune in mm -hmm. to where it's happening. And then we've got to find just the freedom for it just to work. And, and, and it's linked to movement, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems to me to get better. If the first one's like a good breath, the second one's a better breath. Yes. And then the third one's even better. And it just seems knocking on. But yeah. Um, how concerned should you be if you don't last the whole 10 seconds jumping in? All that stuff. I think it's really important to say that doesn't matter. What, what, what the important thing is to start finding this freedom in your ribs, mm -hmm. to start feeling that hopefully extra resonance or, or the resonance that you find there, um, and just go to the end of your breath, which then serves the need to replace it next time. That's the important point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, oh, I can cleverly do 30 on one breath. That isn't, that's not the reason for doing it. It really isn't, yeah? It's really to find that each time you are replacing your breath for that next thought, that's where it's happening. Does that make sense? Yeah. After some speeches in Shakespeare where, you know, there's this whole chunk and, you know, teachers would say, you know, do all this whole thing in, in one breath because it's one idea, like the icy currents and compulsive course, blah, 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 blah. Like, like, if you can't do it, what do you do? You just like to take another breath and keep going? The crucial questions, you, you've got to really handle that. And that's probably in the end part of maybe why you're doing some of this work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so until you right. build up that, 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 that ease and facility mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, that text may be craving that of you. Otherwise, what you're doing is imposing your own breathing pattern onto that text, aren't you? Which is reducing it to you rather than perhaps expanding the text. Yeah. OK, look, we, we, we've talked a lot about the ribs. We've done some work on, there, on them. Let's just spend a little bit more time just feeling this breath go right down inside. That personal breath. Can we just sit again, just in a, in a rocking position? <coughs> OK, and we did it once or twice earlier. But this time, as you just come forward, will you, will you sigh into your hands? And, and I don't want to hear it. I want you to hear your own whispered resonance, which is something quite different from trying to push it out and restrict here. So just gently, if it's usual rock, if, if it's not, Lisa, then, then yeah, just let the breath in what's right for you. Just let the breath in and quite yawny, just sigh a whispered R ah into your hands. Now I'm still hearing it, yeah? So just go, go the other way, actually exaggerate it. So you, you notice what you're doing that's causing that. Can you slightly rasp as you just breathe out? It's so important to hear the whispered resonance of the text. Once we acknowledge that sounds have a truth in themselves, we can then articulate our own personal interpretation through our voices. And the guide really is if, is if there's no rasping sound in it really, yeah? So it's just that warm air coming through, yeah? Good, just once more, rock back. Just feel that warm air on your fingertips. And it sounds easy to say do it, but it's sometimes quite hard to let go there, isn't it? Yeah? And rock back. But it's just good to do it. And just once more, just sigh out there, very yawny, if that's useful to feel that warm breath coming through and going on and out. Just one more. Does this time just whisper an A? Just whisper it. So it's still your pure breath. And I don't want it to rasp, so it really is And once more, try an I. Right. Does that feel good? Mm -hmm. Yeah? It makes sense, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. But it's a sensitive one, isn't it? Because it really is where we perceive our voice, mm -hmm. that we're, we're holding there, perhaps. Just have a listen to this. What do you hear? Just, 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 just
goes up, doesn't it? There's a scale there. You can all hear that? And it's that area that's so fascinating that because of the sh different shapes of the resonators, that's your whispered resonance that's going to be going on. So that if we whisper a line of text, there is that music in it before we put our own music voice on it. And it's that often that one wants to say, let's hear that first. As I would say, hear the ego of the text before you put your ego on it, as it were. Now, we've all got different shapes for those vowels, and they're all going to become slightly different, but there's a music there that's intrinsic in, in, a, in a different shape. Darren, what I'd like you to do is, as if you've now got, not, not, not the blue ball, but, but, but whatever size you fancy for, for, for a vowel, and I'd like you just to throw a vowel across yeah, that I'd like you to catch physically and vocally, and then excitement upon excitement, you get the chance to throw a different one, yeah? Back over, yeah? Yes. Is that right? Yeah? Yep. And we just go down, down the line, yes? Okay. It's all right. So um, really just feel the breath behind it. Yeah? <coughs> Any vowel sign you fancy? Oh! Oh! Ooh! Ooh! Eee! Throwing an imaginary ball, you may feel more released oh. in yourself. You will feel how the breath is behind each sound, how the physical movement helps the breath to develop and move rather than hold. By deliberately not concentrating on the breath, the physical movement is able to release it. Oh. Oh. That's great. <laughs> it's yours, you can keep it. Th th can you throw, throw another one? But this time, will you sing a vowel across, whatever that means to you? Sing it across. But, but, but also, when, you, when you're catching it, can you, can you really catch the quality of the vowel as well as just, just the character of it? So the, the vocal tone of that person. So if it was just an audio recording of this, yeah, it's as if it hasn't changed person. Yeah? All right? All right, when you're ready, Tracy. Strange, but true, we actually relate differently to a vowel when we sing it than when we speak it. In fact, when we speak, the vowel is often less connected to us physically. Great. What am I going to do? What are you doing now? <laughs> you can keep it, yeah? Why don't you throw back, actually? Now just throw a spoken vowel back. Speak a vowel over, right? Ah! Uh. Ah! Uh. E! 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 Ah! Ah! E! E! U! U! O! O! A! A! Great. What happens when we come out to speaking? Like, yeah, yeah. That's the hard thing, isn't it? Yeah. That when we sing, it's much easier to connect with our breath <laughs> and to somehow to do it. But when, you, when we speak, we can do all that preparation work and back we go to, to being throat. <laughs> yeah, but that's what's so hard, isn't it? It's that relationship to speaking as opposed to singing. And there's a difference in the resonance of when we sing because we have time to actually adjust within a word, within a vowel, but it's the speaking resonance that actually is the tricky one. As before, the challenge is to look beyond the particular set of exercises, the important objective being, while you practice turning breath into sound, to maintain a relaxed freedom in the throat. The maxim, the least preoccupation in what's happening in our throat, the better, is perhaps the most helpful for the actor. This is different for a singer who has the time within a musical phrase or within a given word to make a particular physical adjustment in order to achieve a specific quality of sound. There is, however, a way for the actor to reach a greater definition of thought. This means of definition can be called muscularity and is another physical dimension of our voice.
to which we must now turn. Just focus on this area, move it around. Okay, perhaps grasp your hands, give it a shake, feel those jaws hanging loose. Words, as we said, are born in the flesh. And it is this flesh which gives our words their energy and definition. Our vowels and consonants are closely tied up to the movement of specific muscles. It is the movement of the jaw, of the lips and the tongue, of the soft palate, which lends strength and ultimately gives relevance to words. In fact, we can almost say that the mouth is our thought muscle. We must then explore the specific energy and movement of vowels and consonants. But we must remember that muscular agility in itself is of no practical use to us. We are only interested in the muscular substance of sound because we want to relate to the substance of meaning. Paying attention to the particular movement of a consonant or of a vowel is therefore crucial. Feel those jaws hanging loose. <laughs> Upper lip up to the nose, lower lip down, lips forward, okay, fish faces. <laughs> okay, fish in love. <laughs> <laughs> it's absurd, I know, isn't it? yeah? Just get them moving, feel them there. And all the face muscles. For an actor, whose primary concern is the word, his or her personal relation to that word, okay, it is precisely of essence to discover um, how that word can reach the person they are speaking to. But advising the actor to work consciously on his or her vowels and consonants is obviously a sensitive issue, and it must never be about changing them to a prescribed standard. What might be useful from the actor's point of view, is to keep asking questions such as, what is the sound of this particular text? What does this text crave of me that may be in its inherent life? Now, with our newly acquired awareness of breath and resonance, let us open our ears and our mouths to connect with the primitive making of sound. Together, let us find ways to feel and sense the property and character of vowels and consonants. Okay, so I want to do something that, um, if you like, our body is going to be attempting to what's happening in our mouth. All right? So have a bit more space, spread out a bit. Let me just do each sound instruction slightly ahead of you, and then you, then you can join in. Here we go. Mm. Mm. Right, your turn, go. La la la. La 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 wa 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 and ga ka 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 la 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 wa 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 and rest <laughs> what we've tried to do so far is to physicalize specific consonants in the following section the exploration of these sounds continues but this time in more detail with the help of a computer animated sequence you will now be able to visualize the movement of some of these sounds from inside the mouth. Let's now take a look at what happens inside our mouth when we utter a consonant. P. 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 
Pa. 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 Da, 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 da. Ga, 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 ga. Just want us to be quite specific now and in our consciousness about what's happening. So just put a hand up in front of your mouth as we just go. Yeah. So you feel that breath pressure being held, but do you feel something down here as well? Yeah. So that muscularity, if you like, yeah. articulation is down here with that breath. Yeah. And that sound, you need that little spurt of air to get this sound to carry in a theatre space, don't you? Mm. Even more so if you're outside. Because yeah. increasingly our speech today doesn't have to do that, does it? So we start imploding, yes, but just to feel that activity. Yeah. Okay, and now, ba, ba, ba. Okay, now a little quieter. <laughs> yeah, so you find the muscularity of it, not the noise. I think we're so surrounded by noise that's what we pushed out to define, as opposed to muscular shaping. Yeah, ba. ba. So feel that vibration in those lips, and then going on out. Ba, 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 ba. Does that feel ba. right? Yeah. Ma. 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 Right. Ma. 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 Good. Then make it so that it's very, very street cred. Ma. 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 And it sits somewhere up there, yes? And then find it really in those lips. Ma. 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 The other thing I want you to notice is this, this, this sound here. Ba. 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 ba, which takes longer. Ba. Yes, ba. Ba. and it's that length of time that we have to perhaps alert ourselves to. It's not that we're not doing it, but, but, but to actually be aware that that's actually happening in a rhythm of a line. And there's even longer sound, isn't there? Ma. 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 Yeah? Ba. Ba. Short, medium. Ba. 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 Long. Ma. 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 Yeah? And again, I'm not just saying hum it like a sung sound, but find that muscularity of it that then sends it out. Ma. Ma. Same with the tongue tip. Ma. 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 Just check with that spurt of air. That's what makes it impel out, yeah? Now turn that air into sound. Da. 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 Yeah? Da. 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 Feel that tongue tip sending the sound out. Na. 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 Yeah? Let your jaws drop a bit if you want to, to let the sound get out. No. 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 Back of tongue. K. 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 Turn that air into sound. G. 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 Yeah? If you want to just make it with too much tension. G. G. So we cut ourselves off, yeah? We're presenting that sound rather than actually letting it happen in us somehow. G. 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 So it's still quite muscular, but it's not all pushed out. Does that make sense? Ga. Ga. And then mm. Mm. Those are just again. Ba. 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 Ma. Ma. Ta. Ta. Da. Da. Na. Na. Ka. Ka. Ga. Ga. Ma. Ma. Yeah, can you feel those lengths? Yes. Right, mm. good.
I just wanted to take us through a sequence of vowels which inevitably are going to be my vowels. So what I think is important is really I, I want you to experience just the muscular shaping, making of those vowels in your mouth. It's not about imitating mine. But I want you to feel that physicality of the vowels. Is that okay? Yeah. So what might be useful just to really do that is if you like, can you exaggerate, send me up? It's the best way of putting it. Just send me up, whatever I do. Yeah? Right, okay. <laughs> Who? 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 Right, horrendous. But just to feel that muscular shaping, okay? Yeah. Right, good. Just spread out. Now what I'd like to do is just to feel the physicality of them. Just you're going to do um, a swing of the arm like that with the long vowels, and we're going to do a short stab for the short ones, okay? So let me do them in advance, and you can just experience them afterwards. Who? 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 Ha. 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 But what experience we've acquired should not remain solely technical. It must serve our practical needs of speaking. Our agility with sounds will not necessarily help us to give words their due if we don't replace them in their natural context. In a piece of writing, words react to their environment. They acquire a special energy and substance. Speech becomes action. Straight away, just um, air these words out aloud for yourself. Feel them going through your mouth. If you want to just wander around the room, just, just speak in them all at the same time, but not in unison. Okay? Off you go. This is a crucial opportunity to hear what the text craves from our individual voices. Be patient, as it often takes time to integrate all the principles we've been exploring into the process. Now, we'll experience the freedom we have found with our voice through words. During the following sequence, I'd like you to explore a piece of text and to respond to the language. Hear its possibilities through your own voice. Feel the writing feeding you, its form, the shape of the speech, the different lengths and rhythms of thought, the relationship between our breath and the thought of a text. This is your chance to experience the energy and dimensions of the sounds, to respond to the imagery, and to sense the pulse of the meter. Okay, great. Just come and sit down. Turn your words over so they're facing the floor, so you're not looking at them. Okay, what words? Grabbed you as you read that out that time. Grapple. Yeah. Grapple. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dumb. Sternage. Duke Dumb. Sternage. Prison. Work. 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 <laughs> Follow. Follow. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's just just hear it once around because we're not going to to fully sort of realise it in exploration today. Can we can we just just read it round just a verse line each so we just hear it in how the thoughts are actually. Um, relating to the verse form, yeah? Do you mind just kicking us off? Yeah. So pass it around a verse line each, yeah? Thus with imagined wing our swift scene flies in motion of no less celerity than that of thought. Suppose that you have seen the well-appointed king at Hampton Pier embark his royalty and his brave fleet with silken streamers the young Phobus fanning play with your fancies and in them behold, upon the hempen tackle ship boys climbing, 
Hear the shrill whistle with that order give. Two sounds confused. Behold the thread and sails. Spawn with the invisible and creeping wind. Draw the huge bottoms through the furrowed <coughs> sea. Breasting the lofty surge. Oh, do but think. You stand upon the river to behold. A city on the inconstant billows dancing. For so appears this fleet majestical. Holding due course to Harfleur. Follow. Follow. Grapple your minds to sternage of this navy. And leave your England as dead midnight still. Guarded with grandsires, babies and old women. As you carry on, just rock a little bit so you feel your resonance there. Lift yourself up if you could read at the same time. Carry on. Either past or not arrived to pith and puissance. For who is he whose chin is but enriched? With one appearing hair that will not follow. These culled and choice-drawn cavaliers to France. Work. Work your thoughts, and therein see a siege. Behold the ordinance on their carriages. With fatal mouths gaping on girded Harfleur. Suppose the ambassador from the French comes back. Tells Harry that the king doth offer him. Catherine, his daughter, and with her to dowry. Some petty and unprofitable dukedoms. The offer likes not. And the nimble gunner. With Linstock now the devilish cannon touches. And down goes all before them. Still, be kind. And dig out our performance with your mind. Can you just go through it as if you were standing on this, uh, on one side of a, of a, of a, in a crowded street of a sidewalk and someone's having to lip read you across the other side, yes? They can't hear your voice. Can you just do it? Uh, but you're really trying to get through to that person, yes? They must get everything, yes? Right. So no voice, just purely, yeah. So they can only lip read you. Right, go. Really checking that they're getting it. Okay, great. Stop there. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a good exercise. You feel right? Yeah. It's like it's, a rubber band kind of. Yeah. That thought muscle really <laughs> working. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's an activity, isn't it? That is that language moving. Yes. That physicality. Yeah. Okay, now just let breath be there. Whisper it and see what happens now. Okay, in, in your own time, right? From the top, go. Okay, rest there for a minute. What, what about that? What are you discovering by doing that? It gets more wonder into it. It oh, felt yeah. like there was wonder. Why? Right. I'm saying it. There's an air of excitement about it and it moves yeah. really swiftly. Like it, it does, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. to make that connection that actually the activity of communication is actually breath in the end, isn't it? Yeah. That's what reaches. <laughs> so we're exaggerating it, obviously, but it's to remind ourselves of that. It's that activity, really. Yeah. I was also struck by the unison element that we we kind of stayed in. It's so much easier when you're whispering to stay in unison than yes. when it's actually voiced. When you whisper, you actually, because your voice is, is out of it, you're actually fully forming it through the muscularity, aren't you? So we're going to get the lengths much more, those vowels and those consonants, yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's why it's quite useful. Sometimes it's useful to do it in a theatre space, because then you... Remind yourself that it's not about volume to get it over. Mm -hmm. It's about defining that muscularly, yeah? Mm -hmm. And obviously lifting, keeping the thought alive vocally. But, but, but really it's about muscularly doing it. We've just explored vowels and their physical dynamic, etc. Can we just hear the dynamic in the vowels of, of this piece? Yeah? Can we just try and actually just verbalize the vowels, just to a few lines? So say the word in your head, but just verbalize the vowel out aloud. Yes? Yeah? So you're okay just to jump in with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, in your own, own time, go. Ah, uh, e, 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 a, e, e, a, e, e, i, e, o, a, o, o, a, 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 e, a, a, o, o. The movement and length of vowels are not only revealed when we isolate them, but their physicality becomes more obvious. We can't help 
but realize how deeply rooted they are in us. And you can't do too much because you go mad. Yes. <laughs> but now just straight away, just go back and quite quietly, now just, just read it with the words yeah, and see if that, that actually opens up something. Go. Thus, with imagined wing, a swift scene flies, in motion of no less celerity than that of thought. Suppose you should have seen the well-appointed king at Hampton here embark his royalty, and his brave feet with silken streamers the young eagle span. Okay, just stop there. It's hard when we did it all together, isn't it? Yeah. But, but anything different about that? Because the vowel's so long, you kind of bookend it. Yes. It's more like solidly. Yeah, yeah. Chop and tear it. You, you start yeah. needing yeah. those, those yeah. others, yeah. don't you? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Good. So if we just heard the consonant, the, yeah. wa, the, i, ma, j, yeah? Yeah. The, then it's, just try that just a little bit, just, just on the consonants, then you're picking that up. Right, go. The, Okay, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the vowel craves, doesn't it? The, 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 the constant ar around it, yeah, yeah. You'll trust your instincts more while hearing the possibilities of the text out aloud. Don't expect anything wonderful of yourself just yet. Let the language of the text open you up. You might find it useful to hear how the layout of the syllables is related to the sense of the text. Notice that the word confused, for instance, makes one too many syllables in the line. This is a good way to approach the otherwise delicate area of meter. When it comes to pronunciation, don't become obsessed with the correct way of saying a difficult word such as harfleur or phoebus, for example. It's much better to try and find the energy of the word first. You can always turn to a dictionary for reassurance later. Remember, when you're the speaker, you are the authority. Okay, just go round again and if you can bear it, just just to sing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What key? <coughs> Up to you. Just let 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 the tune in, in for what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Lisa, if you do mind. Thus, with imagined wing, our swift scene flies. In motion of no less celerity than that of thought. Suppose that you have seen the well-appointed king at Hampton Pier embark his royalty and his brave fleet with silken streamers the young Phoebus fanning play with your fancies and in them behold upon the hempen tackle ship boys climbing hear the shrill whistle which <laughs> doth order give to sounds confused behold the threatened sail upon with the invisible and creeping wind draw the huge bottoms through the furrowed sea breasting <laughs> the lofty <laughs> surge oh do but Think. You stand upon the ridge and behold a city on the inconstant billows dancing. For so appears this fleet majestical. Holding due course to Hathla, follow, follow. Carry on, but gradually stand up as you as you sing your line. It comes your turn. Grapple yeah. your minds to sternage of this navy And leave your England as dead midnight Rather sail. like singing the vowels as you throw them, singing the text can release the exuberance of a passage and be a source of surprising freedom. With one appearing hair that will not follow These cold and choice join cavaliers to France Work, work your thoughts and then to your siege. Behold the ordnance on their carriages. With fatal mouths gaping on girded Hoffler. Suppose the ambassador from the French comes back. <laughs> Tells Harry that the king doth offer him. Catherine his daughter and with her to dowry. Some petty and unprofitable dukedom. The offer likes not. And the nimble gunner. With Linstock 
Now the devilish cannon touches, and down goes all before them. Still be kind, and eke out our performance with your mind. Great, just lovely. Just once more, do it once more. This time, when it comes to your turn, you can either jump as you say your line, you can just do a gesture into the centre, you can whisper it, you can sing it again if you really want to, yeah? Or, 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 ju or just speak it, yeah? But tell that story through your voice. Just connect to the person that's gone before or come completely different? That would be quite nice, yes. I mean, it's difficult not to sort of notice, isn't it? Because that's what the language is doing, yeah? OK, who wants to start? Yeah? Thus, with imagined wing, our swift steam flies. In motion of no less celerity. Than that of thought. Suppose that you have seen... The well-appointed king at Hampton Pier. Embark his royalty and his brave fleet. With silken streamers, the young Phoebus fan me. Play with your fancies, and in them behold... Upon the hempen tackle ship, boys climbing. Here. Whistle which doth order give to sounds confused. Behold the threaden sails. Born with the invisible and creeping wind. Draw the huge bottoms through the furrowed sea. Breasting the lofty surge. Oh, do but think. You stand upon the rivage and behold. A city on the inconstant billows dancing. Oh. So appears this fleet majestical, holding due course to Hartford. Follow, follow, grapple your minds to sternage of this navy, and leave your England as dead midnight. Still, guarded with grandsires, babies, and old women, either past or not arrived to pith and puissance. But who is he whose chin is? Enriched. With one appearing hair that will not follow. These cold and choice drawn cavaliers to France? Work! Work your thoughts, and therein see a siege! Behold the ordnance on their carriages. With fatal mouths gaping on girded hearthler. Suppose the ambassador from the French comes back. Tell Terry <laughs> that the king doth offer him. Catherine, his daughter, and with her to dowry. Some petty and unprofitable dukedoms. The offer? Likes not. And the nimble gunner? With line stock, now the devilish cannon touches. And down goes all before them. Still, be kind. And eke out our performance with your mind. <laughs> <laughs> OK, rest. Good. I'm going to give you a phrase at a time. And will you just repeat it back to me? But, but actually, will you physically mime it out? What, and, what, what say it? It? and say oh, it as well. Yes, yeah. so physicalize okay. whatever you're saying. You ready? <laughs> Gallop apace, you fiery footed steeds, towards Phoebus' lodging. Gallop apace, you fiery footed steeds, towards Phoebus' lodging. Such a wagoner as Phaeton would whip you to the west. And bring in cloudy night immediately. And bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love performing night. Spread thy close curtain, love performing night. That runaway's eyes may wink and Romeo leap to these arms. That runaway's eyes may wink and Romeo leap to these arms untalked of and unseen. That runaway's eyes may wink and Romeo leap to these arms Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauties. Or if love be blind, it best agrees with night. Or if love be blind, it best agrees with night. Come, civil night, thou sober, suited matron, all in black. Come, civil night, thou sober, suited matron, all in black. And learn me how to lose a winning match. And, and learn me how to lose a winning match. 
played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. Played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. Good rest. What's that, what's, what's that doing? Well, sometimes it's connecting your body to yeah. the right. words that you're saying. Right. With length. If a word is long, then you're right. going to stretch your body and do a Good. huge moment. Or if something is small or short, you want to close yourself right. up or have a quick, fast moment. And your physicality right. just has to be there. Good. It has to be on top of the words you're saying. I was only finding for me that certain words were coming out of the, the sentences. Other words, I was... <laughs> but the leap, and that's the one. Yeah, and I'm sorry, you know, there's this word and blah blah. But there's other words that were clouded for me. Oh, but it was bringing yeah. out words. Yeah, right. Do you know? And other yes. words were probably coming out did, if I did it again because you were doing it a second um, time and another word was coming out. Not the yes. whole thing. But right. that's a good thing though because it makes you figure out what the important word yes. is. You know, right. In, in every line that you was. Which is hard with Shakespeare because there's so many colourful that, words. Yeah. You know, but all but you just how mean. physical that is, isn't oh, it? Yes. yes. Yeah. And it releases the imagination to the physicality of it because it puts you more in the environment when you're thinking about and listening for yes. words that yeah. hit you and then all of a yes. sudden you're there in yeah. that cloudy night. And Great. Let's do something different. Let's look at a little bit of Love's Labour's Lost. Grab that. Mm. What I'd like to do is this. Start it off. And you're just going to read up to the, a punctuation mark. Then you read it again, and this time you add on the next bit to a punctuation mark. And we start at the beginning each time, so that we're going to add on, a bit like one of those games. Right. Does that makes sense. So I'll read it once and then right. read it again. Yes. Says, but love, and yes. then do I go... No, you, that's and the first then. time. Gosh. Then he says it again, and you add on the next bit. Yeah? Okay? Right. But love... First learned in a lady's eyes. But love first learned in a lady's eyes lives not alone immured in the brain. But love first learned in a lady's eyes lives not alone immured in the brain. But but love first learned in a lady's eyes lives not alone immured in the brain. But with the motion of all elements. But love first learned in a lady's eyes lives not alone immured in the brain. But with the motion of all elements. Courses as swift as thought in every power. But love, first learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone immured in the brain. But with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as thought in every power. And gives to every power a double power. But love, first learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone immured in the brain. But with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as thought in every power. And gives to every power a double power. Above their functions and their offices. But love, first learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone immured in the brain. But with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as thought in every power. And gives to every power a double power. Above their functions and their offices, it adds a precious seeing to the eye. But love, first learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone immured in the brain. But with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as thought in every power. And gives to every power a double power. Above their functions and their offices. It adds a precious seeing to the eye. A lover's eyes will gaze in eagle blind, but love first learned in a lady's <laughs> eyes. He lives not alone immured in the brain, but with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as thought in every power, and gives to every power a <clears throat> double power above their functions and their offices. It adds a precious seeing to the eye. A lover's eyes will gaze in eagle blind. A lover's ear will hear the lowest sound, but love. First learn in a lady's eyes. Lives not alone immured in the brain. But with the motion of all elements. Courses as swift as thought in every power. Mm -hmm. And gives to every power a double power. Above their functions and their offices. It adds a precious scene to the eye. A lover's eyes will gaze in eagle blind. A lover's ear will hear the lowest sound. When a suspicious head of theft is stopped. But love. Is... Okay, rest there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, and we've got a rest there. The following is a self-guided sequence meant to be used on your own terms. Don't feel anxious that you're doing something wrong. You have to, in the end, trust yourself. It's much more important to discover by sheer repetition of doing. Take your time, but just ease yourselves down onto the mat. Stretch your legs out if that feels more comfortable or, or crook them up if that helps you to feel 
the smaller the back in contact with the floor. And if your head feels thrown too far back without a book, then, then just place a book under it. It's whatever feels right for you. And just give yourselves a few moments just to tune in to your back spreading on the floor. And perhaps specifically just tune in to the neck, to the muscles in the back of your neck. Roll your head slowly to one side and then slowly back the other way. So you really feel those muscles in the back of the neck moving freely. And then just bring your head back to the middle position so that it's still, but not locked, not fixed. And then, as if your head was a hovercraft, just allow your head just to lift off the books, off the floor. So you're just a little so you're aware of the weight of your head, and then just place it down. And you might want to tune in to whether that made you hold your breath when you did that. So this time, just do it again. And as you lift the head up, just release an F. So there's still breath coming through, even though you're exerting this effort. And just place the head down and let the breath replace. And just tune into your shoulders. Just really check that from inside you're not gripping them. Just feel them easy on the floor. And then just once to be conscious of the tension that might be there, just gently pull the shoulders up just a little bit towards your ears. Only almost that I can't see a movement, but just so that you're engaging the muscles. And then free them. And then just take a moment just to feel your back spreading on the floor, each vertebra, as it were, easing away from the one below. With that feeling, hopefully, of spreading on the floor, just bring the backs of your hands around to your ribs at the side so that you can be aware of the movement of those ribs. And just with your fingertips, just trace around your lower ribs into the small of your back, just to remind yourselves of how low down those ribs are and where that movement can be. And then just place your backs of your hands on your lower ribs. And just whatever breath you've got in there at this moment in time, just sigh your breath right out so that you're ready to breathe in. And just once more, just sigh the breath out empty. And that last little bit just out through an SH, as you feel those ribs now opening out to replace your breath, upper chest free, open the mouth quite wide and no noise, just sigh that breath right out. Empty. And wait for that knee to breathe in and replace your breath as you widen those ribs out. And with your breath, just hum for ten counts, go. Mm, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and sigh out. Shh. And let your breath replace in your own time. And with your breath, hum again and move your lips around to feel them buzzing, go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and empty. And let your breath replace as you inspire. And hum, and with one hand, just pat your chest. Mm. Two, three, move the lips around if you want to. Four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and empty. And let that breath replace in your own time, widen all the way around. Sing out gently through your who go. Two, three, roll the neck if it feels useful. Four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, and empty. And let your breath replace, widen those lower ribs. And ho for ten, go. Ho. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And empty. And let your breath replace. And with your breath, your whore sound go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and empty. And feel those ribs opening out a little more. Upper chest free. Your ha vowel go. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and empty. And let your breath replace. And with your breath, your hey vowel go. Hey. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, and empty, and have a rest for a moment. Have a stretch, have a yawn, any sound you want to release, and then just place one hand, just place one hand back down on your lower stomach, so you can feel that breath reaching right down. And in your own time, with your breath. Fill down with that breath as your hand lifts slightly, and out through an F with that breath. And replace that breath, fill down, and with that breath, who very, very gently, personally, go. Just feel that breath coming through you, turning into sound. Good, and in your own time, replace your breath, fill down, and with that breath, ho, go. Good, and fill down with your breath. Ho, go. Good, and with that breath, fill down. And hey, go. One more, fill down, and with your breath, he go. Good, have a rest for a moment, have a stretch, and then think about getting up. <coughs> And just ease yourself into a sitting position. And just here, let's just gently just rock a little. Good. Good. Just lift the seat off the ground as we just hum. Mm. Or rock from side to side, or pat your chest if you want to. Mm. Good. Just 
do that once more and open to ah go. Mm-hmm. Ah. Good. And come up to standing. Good. Just find yourself standing easily, feet apart. Good. And then put a hand here if it's useful to feel that breath reaching down. <coughs> Find a spot somewhere you want to send your breath to. And with that breath, feel down. And an F to that spot. Good. And with your breath, feel down. And voice it as a V to that spot. Go. Bounce a bit if it feels useful. Feel that breath coming through you actively. Good. And with your breath, once more, feel down. Tongue tip vibrating as Z ears buzzing go. Good. Jump three times. Good, and with that breath, feel down. And who to somewhere in the room, go. Bounce a bit. Good, either run on the spot or run round the room, go. Good, stop, jump three times. Good, and now with that breath, feel down. And ho to somebody in the room, go. Ho. Good. Run. Good. Stop with that breath. Feel down. And ha to anyone. Go. Ha. A bit. Good, come and gather. See that muscularity working? Yeah. Quite sharp. Pa. 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 Three times. Pa. 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 See, feel that muscular energy on each one. Ba. Ba. And now three times. Ba. Ba, ba, ba. A little quieter when really you find it. And ma. Ma, ma. ma. And three times. Ma. 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 Ta. 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 Three times. Ta. 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 Directly to somebody. Da. 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 Three times. Da. 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 Really find it happening each time. Na. Na. And send it. Na. 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 Now find that vibration. Ga. Ga. And three. Ga. 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 Good. Have a stretch. <laughs> Have a yawn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. What would be quite nice now is if you had the opportunity now to focus that through a piece of text of your own. So if you've got something that you want to work on in whatever way, just if, you, if you've got the text, then go and grab it. Otherwise, if you just want to find somewhere in the room or anything you want to do with it, then now's, now's the time just to explore for a few minutes. Now, take a piece of text and try it out for yourself. And just finish it in your own time, whatever you need to do. Great. Anything you want to say? After going through this warm-up and having everything resonating and feeling this here, the, the, uh, there's a delight in just saying these words. 
um, because they uh, they affect you physically more. The warm up itself, you you feel uh, it's it's a uh, you feel the biting off of the words, and you want to, and that itself. Um, it invokes some kind of a physical response that you have that leads to an emotional response just in the word, you know, grapple. And when you really bite it off, mm. it does the work for you. Right. So the making physically with sound, that thought releases the emotion sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So what we have to keep bringing ourselves back to is, yes, we want to feel comfortable with all this, but it's what we are doing to somebody else in the end mm -hmm. is what's the issue, isn't it? And that's what's important. And that's why we keep coming back to the fact that this language has to be active, has to be provoking the response through the sound in somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we've got to rest there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we've reached the end of our physical journey into thinking about voice. But hopefully, this will be a beginning, and for some of us, it will provide a new incitement to explore and become excited about language. In giving advice and wrestling with the fundamental principles of voice and language, our intention is not to hand over a proper, correct way of speaking. What we've tried to make available is the means to discover on your own terms what the proper way for you is, as an individual, with specific needs. The work shown in this video is sometimes demanding and often requires a discipline. But this discipline is a source of freedom in that it can give us the confidence to discover our own personal truth through language and, more often than not, when we work on text through somebody else's words. Eloquence is action, as Shakespeare said. That is to say, our words have a bodily strength. Our thought, which is realized by physical movement, must in turn stimulate a reaction in the listener. For why do we speak, if not to understand and be understood? Communication, a word misinterpreted so often, must be ultimately about restoring this organic communal link between the speakers and listeners today.